What's going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you are new here, my name's Chris and I'm building a business that suits my lifestyle. Now, in today's video, I wanted to take you through a bit of a pulse check to understand where you are as a viewer, as someone watching this, whether you are new here or a long time subscriber, it doesn't matter. Where do you land in terms of a reseller? Now, I want to go through and understand, are you a beginner? Are you intermediate? Are you advanced? Or maybe you're something a bit different. Now, for this to work, I'm going to need a response from you. I'm going to need you to get involved. And to make it simple, I'm going to go through some generalized breakdowns of what a different reseller level may look like. Now, this is generalized and <laughs> I need to make it generalized because I need to make it simple. Now, of course, this is not necessarily saying that that's exactly what you are. You might be, you know, transitioning into advanced and you're still, you know, intermediate, or you might be a bit of all three. It, it's okay. There's no right or wrong to any of this. But what I need from you is for you to respond in the comments below with a hashtag of your level. Newbie equals beginner, hustler equals intermediate, and pro equals advanced. Now, of course, again, this is all based on my own opinion and a generalized breakdown of these definitions of a reseller. And if you think there's some additional things or something that I might have missed, or maybe you've got some tips or something you wish you knew at that level, share them below. Share them below. By all means, this is an open conversation. Now, just remember, we all start at a beginner level and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if you do stick around, I also do have my business update for the week and also some show and tell as well. So, let's dive in. Quick little reminder that, again, this is generalized and there are so many different factors which will make so much variety, which will impact how this will be different to everyone on a case-to-case -case basis. But if we're going to start with something, we're going to start with what does a newbie look like? What does a beginner look like? Now, if this is you, chuck a hashtag down below and, you know, leave a comment. But the first definition of a beginner or a newbie is someone who's just kind of started to explore the world of reselling, or maybe you've started to flip on eBay, potentially with very limited knowledge uh, about the market or the dynamics or even how eBay potentially works and what to sell and how to sell and the steps that go with it. In my opinion, I think this is someone that's probably doing probably around two to 10 sales a week, most likely less than 10. And usually someone that's doing this as a hobby or an idea or something to further explore. Regular activities usually come down to this. You're listing a few items on an occasional basis. Um, you know, here and there, there's no really consistent routine. You're probably mainly listing personal items, clearing out stuff from home, which is really good. It's a great way to start and you're not necessarily sourcing all that time to resell. You have very minimal investment in branding or any store customization or any sense of a business application to this process. Now, of course, there's also going to be some pros and cons with all this. And some of the pitfalls of being a beginner is not obviously doing enough research to understand what is in current demand at the moment, which might mean why you're not getting a lot of sales. For instance, what are the products? What's the current value of these things? What are the demand of these things? What's the supply of these things? And what is the quality expected of these items? The next one is then pricing the items without considering eBay fees, GST, if that applies to you, uh, shipping costs, and all the other overhead costs that come with selling on eBay. And these costs continue to rise. So you need to be relevant to those costs. And I think the other big one is ignoring customer feedback or not addressing returns efficiently. You know, skipping out on the hygiene tasks. These are the most important things because if your customer is not happy, that's going to show very, very quickly and it's not going to enable you to continue to sell quickly, effectively, or even at all. Now, there are some growth strategies that we can take as a beginner level to start to move further up the tier, which would be to familiarize yourself with eBay's platform, tools and resources and what they have available. To start to research top selling items in Australia or, you know, in your market, what are the things that are selling and what is a niche that you're comfortable doing that makes sense to be selling. And also learning about, in this case, Australian consumer protection laws in the sense of, you know, what about returns? How do they apply? What are people eligible for? And what are you eligible for as a seller? But also understanding the postal rates and the expectations to cater for the costs that continue to change in an ever so changing environment and also how much you're gonna to have to weigh out in order to be able to sell something and how you can apply this to your business model. All right, now we move into the next territory. Now, let me know below if this is you, if you're the hustler, intermediate level. And the definition of this is a reseller with a consistent presence on eBay, uh, someone that's having an understanding of the market trends, so things are changing all the time, 
has some good experience and has a variety of experience with types of transactions and scenarios that can occur when selling on eBay. In my opinion, I think this is someone that's averaging around 25 sales a week or doing anywhere between $30,000 to $60,000 revenue in a year. And this is usually probably someone that's doing it part time. So it's quite a big jump from a beginner and there's obviously going to be levels and tiers between a beginner and an intermediate level as well. So regular activities that, you know, a intermediate or a hustler might be doing, sourcing items specifically to sell, right? That That's really now we're starting to get into the intent to resell possibly and most likely from thrift stores, garage sales, and could even be wholesale. Potentially maybe using tools like Terapeak to analyze market data uh, to understand you know, what's working, but also going above and beyond and doing the additional research to understand what should you be selling. Uh, actually offering promotions and discounts and occasionally working on lead generation of new customers and actually getting those customers into your store. Some of the areas of pitfalls could include getting a little bit stagnant with some of the product range and, um, you know, failing to adapt to the different market changes. This might be seasonal, this might be just with the trends, and it also might not be very relevant at a certain point in time. It doesn't necessarily mean they're bad products. They might just not be ready to sell at this point in time. It could also be quarterly too. Not optimizing your listings for eBay's search engine now, you know, keeping them clean, keeping them the hygiene of those listings top notch, making sure that they have good photos, making sure they have good descriptions, all the, you know, specifics and all the things relevant that eBay wants to see, you know, that they're not necessarily being optimized. The next one is overlooking the importance of customer service and building loyal customer base. Now, you've gotten past the point of, you know, getting good feedback and actually sending on time, but now there's the next level of trying to bring back a loyal customer base and also making sure that the customer knows they are important. And I think this one, a lot of us still struggle with, is neglecting international shipping and not actually giving it a chance and the opportunities that it might have. Growth strategies in this area would include considering diversifying product range based on seasonality or different trends that are occurring, investing in better photos or descriptions in the listings and understanding the item specifics and doing that additional research for keywords that would elevate the listing, networking with other eBay resellers for insights, collaboration, um, being willing to learn. You don't know what you don't know, but also looking to implement systems and optimization around how you go about doing workflow and, you know, getting things done. Whether it's also, you know, putting in a workflow or a system for a SKU system, it might even be putting in, you know, business policies on eBay as well. Let me know if that was you. Chuck a hashtag down below as Hustler. Now, the final one is pro. So hashtag pro advanced. If this is you, chuck it down below. And the definition of advanced is a seasoned eBay reseller, someone that's been doing this for a few years at least um, and has a well-established store, probably operating out of a location that is solely for the business. And it might even be your garage. That's fine. And you're operating as a business entity. You have a diverse product range that could still be a niche product range, but it's diverse, you're offering plenty of opportunities for customers walking through the door, and you have a deep understanding of both the eBay platform and also the market that you're selling in. My opinion is this is 50 plus sales a week and turning over a minimum of $100,000 revenue a year. Now that, you know, that could be different for everyone, but that's, you know, generalizing where I see it as. And usually this is someone that's doing it full time. Regular activities in this area would be sourcing from a variety of places. It could be wholesale, bulk lots, overseas partnerships and things like that. And the idea for this is to offer focused products to their customers. Utilizing eBay's advanced tools and perhaps even third party integrations not necessarily applies to everyone. It also depends on your business model as well, but this could be the case. Utilizing advanced strategies to speed up sell through rate and turnover of stock through systems and tools and applying, you know, ways of liquidating stock, which could be getting rid of it through auction, could be getting rid of it through wholesale, could be getting rid of it through other means. Engaging in branding activities and focusing on a customer experience to have return customers come back and have that consistent experience. Now, there are pitfalls here and things, look, we're always learning, we're always growing. I think the first one is becoming complacent with success and not keeping up with the platform or the market changes. And this is this can be hard as you start to grow to make bigger changes, it makes it becomes quite difficult. Ignoring smaller emerging competitors. It's a growing area of market. There's plenty more people entering into the field, which means competition is high. And the next one is not necessarily reinvesting in the business for further growth. There comes a point in time where maybe the profits start to become 
more pleasing than the growth of the business. And that might actually be okay because you don't have to keep growing. But, you know, that, that might be some of the pitfalls that we get is it becomes too much or the effort or it's overwhelming and it's too big to handle and not being able to reinvest into the business for further growth, meaning hiring someone or getting a bigger space or changing things up because it might just not seem worth it. I think for growth strategies in this area, I think exploring to sell in other methods off eBay, and this would already be happening, but I think by increasing these channels, such as private deals, wholesale, auctions, and partnerships, engaging with community through social forums, workshops, and networking events to further grow your own branding, but also give you more opportunities and help other people build their business too, and I think also the other growth area is, con is continuously to revisit and analyze data to refine sourcing and market strategies, understanding what's working, what's not, and being able to double down in those areas. And usually at this level, you have the ability to do so. Again, these are very three generalized <laughs> different <clears throat> definitions of types of resellers. And there's likely that there's plenty here that I have not covered or I haven't even considered across all th three tiers. And there's probably combinations of all three of them in different categories of their own. So the question back to you is where do you fit? Are you a newbie, AKA a beginner? Are you a hustler, an intermediate, or are you a pro and advanced? Let me know in the comments below and share with me any tips, thoughts, or opinions you may have here as well. Let me know where you would like to be as well. Let's continue the conversation. Chuck them down below and let me know. Now, if you stuck around this long, let's dive into this week of business. Week 136. I've actually been out sick. You can probably still hear it in my voice a bit. So it's been a bit of a slow week for me. Less attention in the business, uh, which is a bit frustrating, but you know, you do need to call it when you need to take a break. And I haven't been able to spend as much time posting, listing, or even sourcing as much. But all round, it's still been a pretty good week. We, we did land on a bit of an average, just below average of where I would like to be. And it is one of the lower ones for sure, but very interesting to see what's been selling. And as you can see here, Surprisingly, it's actually not been a lot of categories. Clothes and jeans have taken off like usual. Really rewarding books have been pretty good this week, actually. Electronics, not too bad. DVDs have been lower. Toys, CDs, and video games are on the lower end as well. So not too bad. We have done a total of, you know, just shy of $2,500. So not too bad. In terms of the top four items or four items that I want to share with you this week, uh, these were pretty cool actually. And the first one is this Mountain Equipment 80s Vintage Puffer Jacket. Now I've had this one for a while, probably, I probably picked it up October last year. And this one's been sitting around for a while and it finally sold. It has sold a few times as non-payers, but finally it sold, cost me $5.42 as an average cost of good. And uh, the revenue here was $130 and it's gone locally. So I've profited $93.97. When I actually did pick this up, which was last financial year, I actually paid $15 for this. Again, coming back to average cost of good. I have done a video on this. If this confuses you, you can you can go check it out. I'll speak to your accountant, simple. The next one was Levi's Premium Ribcage um, Corduroy Jeans. Now these were pretty cool corduroy jeans because I've never seen them before. And they were a rib cage and leopard print. Now, if you don't know what that means, but they were quite unique, you don't find these very, very often. I picked these up locally, actually. Again, paying an average cost of $5.42 for these, $68.38 was the revenue for these ones. And after fees and postage, walked away with $43.36. These have gone to New Zealand. The next item for this week was this Kenji Denim Sherpa Jacket. Now, this is the second time selling one like this. Again, with an average cost of good, I have been able to sell this one for $59 and walked away with $33.98 after fees and postage in profit. And then the final item that I'll share for this week is this Boney and Kelly Gang hardcover dust jacket, 1960 books. Now this one, this one sat around for a while, but I got some pretty good money for it. Again, average costs are good, you can see there, but I've been able to sell this for $51.70 walking away with $27.81 after fees and postage. Now, in terms of the entirety of the week, how have I actually progressed? Well, as I said, volume has been down, but ASP has been up. So we've done 68 sales. We've done a total of $2,495 worth of revenue. Cost of goods was $486.35. Profit being just over $1,000. ASP was $36.69 and average cycle time was 98 days. Now, if you stuck around this long, let's dive into some show and tell. All right, team, it is Monday morning and we've got a whole bunch going out. A uh, total of 29 items, a couple of bundles in there, so it is a bit more than 29. Um, 
and we're back down to 38,700. So we are still dropping, but it keeps going up and then down. Um, we had a, quite a lot of books just sell yesterday, which was quite interesting. A few different bundles here, some going international. Um, these are actually, they're not for this lot, but they're just here because I've got to make sure I send them off, drop them off to someone. Um, we've got some Harry Potter cards, we've got Pokemon over there, we've got um, some CDs, we've got some cameras, lots of clothing, jeans, shorts, just cool hats going out. Um, more shirts, shirts, jeans, 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 and jeans, and I guess jacket. So pretty happy with this. Um, yeah, bit of a quieter weekend, but a higher ASP. So volume-wise, things are down, but people are still spending. So I'll take it. I'll take it. Let's uh, pack it up. All right, team, all done. Nice big stack here. We're gonna pack it all into the posty bag and then be on our way ah <sighs> not too bad all right team it is our uh, thursday today and we're back at the shop with some more goodies to go out um been a bit slow this week just well me i mean i've been a bit slow this week but sales have been a bit slow this week as well but we're back here again sharing the roller coaster we've got 30 sales going out because i didn't post in the middle of the week and we're back down to 38.5 so we have dropped 1.5 from our top um, actually 2k from our top what I will quickly show you is I've been making some adjustments doing some shuffling around here now I have a new rack actually these two are going out this guy and this guy this guy's going for 130 which is pretty cool um, we've put up some shelving in here as you can see some new shelving shelving um, basically cleared out all the rest of the other stuff that's now all going through the process of being listed still got a bit of t-shirts here um, still got a bit of got some overflow down here i've got some racks here as well this stuff is to go over there i just haven't sorted it into the other one this is actually basically from another deal that came through i've just separated it out but also made some extra space here as well so i'm um, about to get my next big lot of stock to come through uh, that will be coming probably next week actually so we're processing all that um got this little guy on wheels um and we're pretty much chockers. I've been shuffling this once a week at this rate and basically making up two bays. Sell through red has dropped. Um, haven't been selling as much volume, but when I have been selling, usually the ASP is a little higher. So it's a bit interesting what's going on at the moment. Um, I've been working on clearing out some of the DVDs and stuff. Had a deal that fell through, which is all good. I was gonna be basically selling off all of this, all of that, all this. Um, However, it didn't go through, which is okay. Working through some alternative options. The books I'm still working on as well. I was actually gonna take all this home um, to make space for all this, but if I don't have to take it home and I can sell it, then I will. Um, but yeah, just weighing up a few different options. Um, we've got stock now going up there as well. Um, I need to do a consolidation. Uh, there's lots of little things that I need to do, but I've been a little bit under the weather, so just juggling a lot of things at the moment. Um, all right, let's get to picking, packing, and posting. A lot of jeans, shirts, we've got some fleece going out, we've got a whole bunch of books. This guy's gone over to US, we've got a camera, Harry Potter, this guy, going for 30 bucks. Got some anime over there, we've got um, more shirts and things like that, a few bundles of clothes here as well. Um, this guy went this morning for $51. Not too bad, so happy with that. Um, yeah, let's pack it up and uh, get on out of here. Now I've probably got to do some other work too. <laughs> I do have some winners from last night's raffle and things like that as well, which I'll take you through shortly. Alright team, all packed up. I'm about to do the print. Now a couple of winners from last night. We had a Dirty Thrifter and we also had Nat win and she donated hers to Dirty Thrifter. We also had Angel come through with a nice little cheeky Leafeon V there as well, which wasn't too bad. Um, and the big winner of the raffle, which last week, oh, sorry, yesterday was um, basically we had some pop vinyls. We had, um, what have we got here? We've got Lego in here as well, Flintstones, Lego. Um, we've got Lion King and a few different things in there. So I've got to make that box up, but it was pretty good. At the time of this video, we're probably at about 6,500, 6,600. Um, we've got pretty cool things coming up. We've got more Pokemon stuff coming up. We've got a Switch coming up. We've got more Pokemon stuff coming up. And we've probably got a few other little surprises in there. And of course, we've got the main event coming up as well, which um, 
you haven't checked that out, I'll be opening up basically a case of Obsidian Flames, and there'll be a few more giveaways and raffles on that day as well. So make sure you get involved. Appreciate you all getting involved so far as well. Cheers. All right, team, really do appreciate being here. Again, if you've got any questions about the three different tiers, the three different levels of a reseller, and if you haven't gone back and actually put your hashtag, chuck them down below. I would really, really like to know where you think you fit. There's no right or wrong answer. More than happy to, you know, think if you're in between or something a bit different. Let me know in the comments as well. Anyway, appreciate you. You have a wonderful day. Cheers.